Hey guys, I'm Dave. Thanks for checking out this video. If you know me, you'll know that I'm obsessed with designing graphics for t-shirts. I think there's nothing cooler than being able to design something, have it printed on a t-shirt, and then wear it around day to day. Anyway, if you're here checking out this video, it probably means you're interested in it too. I know it's kind of ironic. My obsession with t-shirts and designing t-shirts started many, many years ago. And even though I've been working on this channel for a couple years, this will be the first t-shirt design tutorial on it. So I hope it lives up to the hype. I hope it lives up to my own personal expectations because like I said, I, I think t-shirt design is up on a pedestal for me. So let's go and jump into Illustrator and see what we can put together. Okay, here we are in Illustrator, and the first thing you need to do is create a new document. So Command N will pull up the new document window, or you can go File, New. Now, I'm gonna work on a 20 by 20 inch square canvas. No rhyme or reason here. It's Illustrator and everything's vector, so you can adjust the size later as needed. But 20 by 20 is what I'm gonna start with. So here's our blank canvas. And depending on how you work, you may have photographic reference, you may freestyle. In this case, I did a super rough sketch and I'm gonna bring that in as reference. So go to File, Place, and navigate to your image and select it. In this case, I just shot it with my phone and sent it to myself via email. Click and drag to place your document. And in this case, like I said, it's super rough. I'm not working on top of this. I'm not trying to copy it exactly. I just wanted to kind of get an idea of the structure that I wanted to build today. So I'm gonna leave this off to the side of my canvas. I'll lock this layer and name it reference, just so I don't confuse anything, get anything lost. Um, while we're working on our document, if we're shifting in and out of preview mode just to troubleshoot paths, and we want this reference to stay available, what you can do is make it an actual template layer. So if you double click on it and click off the template um, box here, it's gonna dim the images. You can change that if you'd like or leave it at 50, which is the default. But now whenever you switch back and forth between preview and outline mode, this image will always be visible and you could just have it there to work with. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is create guides and I want them to be aligned perfectly to the center point vertically and horizontally on my canvas. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna house the guides on this layer. I had a 20 by 20 inch canvas, so I'll create a rectangle. Press M on the keyboard to pull that up. And I'm gonna make a 20 by 20 inch square. Color and stroke don't matter at this point because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the position dialog up here, X and Y, to center this. 10 inches and 10 inches. It's the center point of a 20 inch by 20 inch canvas. And then I'm gonna pull up my rulers. Command R does that. And I'm gonna drag out a ruler from the top, align it to the center, and I'm gonna drag out a ruler from the side and align it to the center. I no longer need this rectangle. It was just there to give me that center point. And then this is just something that I do. You don't have to do this, but I will lock this layer that has the guides on it and I will literally call it guides. Now there's no confusion because normally your guides show up as objects like this inside of your layers. And it can get confusing if you're turning layers on and off and copying and pasting in and out of documents. Um, also, if your guides become unlocked, you can move them around accidentally. So this is just an extra step that I'll do when I'm setting up my document. You don't have to, but just a handy tip. Then I'll name this main because that's where I'm gonna work. And we're gonna get started now building a glass sphere from an hourglass. Again, so many different ways to work in Illustrator. This is just one of the things that I like to do, which is to build my shape roughly with the rectangle tool. Now, I believe this shape here is still the default. Yes, it is. So it has a white fill and a black stroke. We're just gonna turn off the white fill Make sure the black stroke is zeroed out. And now we can start to adjust the width for now. Let's say 
10 points is going to look good. And I will create a copy of this. So there's, again, so many ways to work, but what I'll do here with the object selected, I'll hold down Option on my keyboard and drag out a copy. If all you do is move it, it moves. By holding down Option and moving an object, it creates a copy. And then I'm gonna hold down Shift. So Option and Shift will constrain the transformation as we move it down. And the option creates the copy. This copy here, I will shorten up right to the middle. And then these two shapes, I will use the Pathfinder, which is over here, to unite them into one shape. My stroke width reduced because I think I have scale, stroke, and effects checked off. You can get rid of that option by going Object, Transform, Scale, and then unchecking Scale, Stroke, and Effects. Pardon me. And then hitting OK. Now by default, that will stay on. So when you scale something up and down, the stroke won't scale with you. So the whole reason to unite those two rectangles together is so that we can get a rectangle with extra points in here. This is now going to allow us to um, transform these two points to create the taper of the hourglass. So we're gonna go object, transform, scale, and I'm gonna just test out a number in here. So I'm gonna go down to 20% scale and I will preview it just to see if I like the look. So now those two points have scaled in and I might go down a bit further even, go down to 15% and that looks good to me. Hit okay. And now I'm going to round off the top two points. So I'm going to use my direct selection arrow, the white arrow. And I'm just going to pick up the top points and I'm going to round off their handles to about there. You're going to need Illustrator CC or higher. I think that's when these handles were introduced. Um, I love that feature. It saves me a lot of time when kind of creating rounded corners like this. These two points, I'm gonna select them as well and round them off, not as severely, about like that. And now I'm gonna select this shape and I'm gonna reflect it across the middle axis. So I'm gonna use O on the keyboard to do that. And I'm gonna reflect across the horizontal axis and I'm gonna create a copy. I'm gonna select both of these and unite them using the Pathfinder. I'm then gonna select the middle two points and round those off and I can undo it a bit there to a point where I'm happy with it. And there's the basis of our hourglass shape. You can adjust this as you see fit. Um, like I said, my pencil sketch or my marker sketch here was really rough. Just trying to give me a basic idea of what it is that we're building. So the next thing I wanna do is create some sand inside of this shape. So I'm gonna select the path and then say object, path, offset path. And I'm gonna go in a negative direction and I'm gonna try negative quarter inch. This is all gonna be dependent on your canvas size, your actual artwork size. And uh, right there, we've gone in a little bit too far because it's um, not completed in the middle and we want that shape to be completed. So let's try negative 0.15 and see how that looks. Uh, maybe a little bit more, let's try. That. Okay, and I like that. Now we still have a stroke and no fill on this path. Right now I want to flip that. So Shift X is the key command to flip the stroke and the fill. You can also find that option up here in your color palette. You can swap the fill and the stroke. Handy shortcut to know, Shift X. Now I'm gonna create the effect of some sand kind of being in here a little bit uneven. It's not gonna be symmetrical like everything else that we're doing in this project. And I'm gonna just use the pen tool to create a path that comes down, up about there, and then back down again. And then I'm gonna mask off the entire top section of this path, and I'm gonna select both of them, hold shift to select multiple paths, and then click. And I'm gonna use the pathfinder to subtract the front shape from the bottom one. And then I'm gonna select these two points here and round them off. And it creates this cool sloping sand effect. The next thing I'm gonna do, I wanna make sure that this line that falls down to the bottom is um, even the whole way down. 
So I'm going to find that anchor point there and I'm going to create a rectangle like so. And then I'm just going to move it across here so that it covers up all these areas that I want. I'm going to select the sand path and I'm going to subtract it. Now, when you subtract an element like that, Illustrator will leave this as a group. So now I want to continue to work on this path down here and subtract a few more bits and pieces. But because these are grouped, that will cause problems. So you can ungroup them with Command Shift G. You also find it up here in the menu, Object um, Ungroup. It's no longer a group, so it's grayed out, but that's fine. Okay, so now we're going to work just on this bottom path here. And I want to create a taper from the middle. And I want to go down and across. This shape here, I'm going to copy. I'm going to well, I'm going to reflect it and create a copy across that middle point on the vertical axis, and hit copy. Now both of these shapes are in front because you've just created them. And then if you hold Shift and select your bottom path there and subtract, you end up with something that's looking like this. This is like the sand piling down the, the um, from the top half of the hourglass. I'm going to select those points and round them off so that they're looking a little bit more gradual, a little bit more sand-like. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a rectangle that just sits here for now. And then I'm going to align it there to that outer point. So now that is seamless. And now this path I can extend out to here. And now that looks like the sand falling to the bottom of the hourglass. I'm going to select all three of these paths and I'm going to unite them. And then what's ended up happening here is it was a sharp transition. I want that to be more sand-like, more fluid. So I'll just round off those handles. And I like the way that that's looking. Um, the last element that I had kind of wanted to create for this glass bulb here was a bit of a highlight. So I've got a neat trick to do that. I'm going to select this outer path and I'm going to offset it again, the same offset that I did for the sand, object path, offset path, okay. And then I'm going to create a copy of that, paste it in front and just move it up 45 degrees like so. And then I'm going to tap it up just a couple taps. And then if you look in that, look at that in preview mode or um, outline mode, you can see what's going to end up happening here is that we're going to create this nice thin sliver that comes off to a taper by subtracting this path from the path underneath. And you can see that nice taper that looks like a reflection. Now, the same thing was created on the bottom, but then we've got a few remnants that we're going to need to clean up. So this was a path here that's extra. We can just select it and delete it. And then down here, again, these are groups, so we want to ungroup them. I'm just going to create a rectangle. And we didn't like the way that this tail was formed, so we're just going to use that to cut that section there. And I think we're looking pretty good. There's still a stroke, so the path is the right shape, but there's a stroke. Let's shift X and swap that. There we go. That's the effect I was looking for. Now we can take all of these paths here. Let's take this one and outline it. Object, path, outline stroke. And we can just merge everything together. And it just gets rid of those overlapping areas and merges it all together into the one nice clean path. So our bulb is complete. The next thing I want to create are the upper and lower portions and the feet for this hourglass. So there's a lot of techniques that are going to be repeated here. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a bunch of rectangles. So M on the keyboard to pull up the rectangle tool. We're going to work from our center point. So if you align it here, I've got my smart guides on, command U pulls that up. And if you option click when you're using the rectangle tool, it just anchors the center point on the area that you clicked. If you didn't do that, if you just created a rectangle starting from the middle, you could only go out to the left or the right when you're creating your shape. And that's fine. You can create it like this and center it later but it's also handy to know how to control where the rectangle starts from. So let's create one rectangle like this. It'll be the beginning of the top. And then I'm gonna select the bottom two handles, round those off like so. 
I'm gonna create another layer here. Let's go like this, somewhere about there. Let's round these off completely so we get kind of a pill shape. Let's create a copy of that. Fill that with just a rectangle. Goes out a bit further, a bit wider. Now all of this stuff I'm just kind of eyeballing. Feel free to um, set your file up the way that you like. And then let's create one more layer on top. It comes out the full width. And uh, what can we do here? Let's add in a detail and subtract something from this path. So let's round off these corners just a touch to match the look. And then let's come back to our center point with the rectangle tool and create a square. So we're holding down option so that it's locked onto the center. And then we're gonna hold shift so that it's a square. We're constraining that. And then we're gonna pull up the move tool and rotate that square holding shift. So it constrains to a, I guess that's a 45 degree rotation. And then just so we can see it, let's use the eyedropper tool and make it white. Now we can see what we're working with here. We've got this nice diamond. I'll reduce it in size a bit. Holding down shift so that it remains a square. And then let's drag out copy. So again, holding option and shift. And now if you've watched any of my tutorials, you'll know that my favorite key command is transform again, which repeats the last transformation. Command D. And we get a nice lineup of diamonds across the top of this. Let's group these together, Command G, and then reflect across our middle point here, and copy. Now let's select all of these diamonds and the bottom shape and subtract it. That leaves you with one black compound path instead of the white shapes sitting on top. And then, I don't know, what else can we add in here? Maybe, maybe a subdivision in here. And we'll round that off and then subtract it from this shape. Just as an extra little detail. And then let's create the feet. So we're gonna use a rectangle along the center. And then we'll make a copy of that, make it smaller. Merge these two elements together. And round off these handles. And then we'll round off the top like so. And we'll create a circle. that's sitting about there. That's a good looking foot. We can add some details in here as well. So let's merge all of these together using the Pathfinder. And then let's create a circle in the middle. Make it white just so we can see it. And then drag out a couple copies. If you don't like where your copies are sitting and you want to adjust them, you can slide one over so your outer ones remain in the position that you want them to be. You can select all of them, and then you can use the distribute option up here. And uh, your outer ones will stay in the position that, that they were originally, but everything in the middle will fall into an evenly spaced setup. Let's reflect these across here and subtract them from the foot. This foot will drag over to about there, and we'll do the same thing on this side. And you know what? I want the middle foot to be less detailed, and I also want it to be smaller. So making it smaller is easy. We're gonna use the align option again up here. We're gonna select all three feet, and we'll use align to bottom, vertical align bottom. Because this shape was up higher, we go to the, mo the bottom most object when using that function. And then I want to delete these points, these circles, um, because we've got a compound path here. If you just try to pick it up with the regular selection arrow and hit delete, you delete the whole path. What you'll want to do is use the direct selection arrow and you can pick up just a section of those circles. And if you hit delete twice, it will delete 
those paths for you and leave you with just the main outer path, as long as you didn't have anything selected. So there's the top of our hourglass. And I like the look of that. So let's group this all together. And in here, just to be complete, we can merge that. And there we go. Now, there's a lot of repetition in an hourglass from top to bottom and left to right. Things are very similar. Obviously the sand we set up to not be symmetrical, but everything else will be. So we can just reflect this across our middle guide across the horizontal plane and create a copy and this thing will come together quite quickly with all of the repetition because all we're going to do now is build one of the arms and it will repeat to the other side so i don't need to talk through that because it's all the same all the same functions that we've done so far Okay, the next thing we want to do are create this diamond and circle that's going to kind of interlock in the background. So pull up our guides again. Okay, M, pull up a rectangle, create a square, holding shift and option, and it can sit about there. Then rotate it, holding shift. And it's a bit large, so let's reduce it in size to a point we feel comfortable right about there. I want the stroke to be thinner because I don't want it to overpower the rest of the hourglass. I want it to be just kind of a background element. And then I'm going to create a circle from the same point. And we're going to bring that out to about here. And then I'm going to create another diamond about here. I want this to be filled, not stroked. And that looks good. And then let's reflect this across the middle. And hit copy. Now, these paths here are kind of getting in the way. So a lot of the time you can cut and hide elements just so that they're kind of implied that they're running in behind an object. So C is your scissor tool. And then you can cut elements like this, and then using the direct selection arrow, just delete the areas you don't want anymore. Because these detail strokes are thinner than the object we're tucking them in behind, it's easy to hide them in, in here. It'd be a different story if the path that we're trying to hide is thicker, then you would have to use Pathfinder and kind of create more of a mask. But we can get away with the scissor tool and leaving the stroke active like this. And then we can delete the unwanted sections. Like so, that looks looking cool. And then we're gonna do some vertical type in this empty space that's been created. So if you just go to your type tool, click and hold, and then select vertical type. We're gonna type 20, and I'm gonna use Bison, which is a font that I got uh, a couple years ago, I think on Design Cuts. I go to it a lot, it's quite, uh, quite nice. And we're going to put a 20 in here, scale it up to a point that we like it, and then drag out a copy over here. Obviously, you can put any date in there, any combination of letters, the initials of your brand. But for me, 2020 works well. Um, the next thing that I kind of wanted to build down here, I just depicted it as X's, but it was supposed to be a chain link. So an easy way to create chain link is to use a rectangle use a stroke, round off the corner slightly, and using the pen tool, just create a line, and then add round end caps to that line. And that creates 
a chain link effect when you drag out copies. I don't like the position of that just yet, so let's make that lower. And now we'll drag out our copies and then transform again a couple times and then delete the bottom one. And then we get this kind of cool chain link effect. Let's scale it down a bit and position it right about here. And then I'm gonna reflect a copy across the middle. Like I said, lots of repetition in a design like this, but that's okay. Cause you get quite used to doing all those effects. The next thing I had up at the top inside this container were just meant to be stars. So a neat way to do a little graphic star is to create a square, rotate it, and then use effect, distort and transform, pucker and blow. And you can pucker this a bit and it creates a cool little graphic star, which you could place around randomly in your composition. One thing you'll notice here, the actual outline of this shape is still the original square because the effect is live. You can actually edit this effect. So if you go over here to the appearance panel and click on pucker and blow, blow you have to have the object selected, but you would be able to update this pucker to a spot that you're happy with. And then when you go to distribute the file, like send it out, you can expand this. So you go with it selected, you would say object expand appearance. And now your outline is the actual puckered shape, which I'm calling a star for this project. Okay, so I'll save that for later until our final container shape is created. Let's make that now. So I'm gonna create a circle first. I'm gonna find my center point. holding shift to constrain to make sure is this a circle. Let's align it with the middle point of our diamond there. And let's pick up this stroke. The eyedropper will obviously match that stroke for you. And then I'm gonna create a rectangle that runs from this anchor point and then lines up at that one. And let's bring this down to a point that we like underneath the hourglass. I like that. Now we can unite both of these shapes to create that container we were looking for. Now I've ended up building it too tall. So we can select just the points at the top and bring it down to a spot that we like. We can also add in some other random details and we're also gonna have to use the scissor tool again. So C on the keyboard pulls that up. Now we're gonna cut this and delete this section so it looks like it's sitting in behind. I'm gonna repeat that on this side. There we go. And then I'm gonna just add in one final little scallop detail on the bottom here. So using the pen tool for that, I'm gonna create a line here, and then we're gonna drag out copies. Transform again. And that one's too high, so we'll just stick with there. I'm gonna select all of those shapes, deselect that one because I didn't want that, group it, and can you guess, flip it, copy. There we go. That looks cool. And where's my star? Let's just distribute a few of these in here randomly. And let's reduce the scale of a few of them. Create a nice, cluster of smaller stars. Maybe one more medium one. And then, oh, I went too small. Now we'll pick this path up here, okay? So we'll copy that and we're gonna add it onto a new layer. We're gonna lock this original layer and then paste in front with Command F. Pick up these anchor points and bring them back down to the bottom. This path is what we'll use to create this now outer thicker path. So we're gonna, with that selected, let's go, let's actually close the bottom. Let's 
let's offset that by a fair amount. So object, path, offset path, and we wanna go in the positive direction this time, and let's try one full inch, maybe even a bit more, one and a quarter inches. That's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll even go up to one and a half. I'll trial and error at this point. And then I wanna make this a significantly thicker stroke. We're gonna have some copy running in here and it's gonna be reversed out in white. Might even go a tad bit thicker, which means that I need to offset this further. Object path, offset path, and let's go out an additional quarter of an inch. That's good. And I wanna delete my middle section, which was too small, and then just increase the stroke weight here. Okay, and then here this path, we'll delete the bottom section again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this path to set copy on this outer path. And the way we're gonna do that is you're gonna use the type tool and we're gonna convert this to type on a path. And then there's a few steps that we need to do. So I wanna make this type centered on the path. And then I wanna make sure that these handles, the outer handles line up with the ends of the path. So down here at the bottom and then down here on this bottom. Our uh, location of the type is correct. We want it to be sitting on top of the path and not under the path. Sometimes you may end up with type that looks like this, but in this case, we wanna be on the top and we want our type to be much, much larger. So let's start with that in our type panel over here. Let's see how this is gonna look. That's pretty good. And we're gonna track it out a lot. Actually, I haven't typed anything here now. So you can type in your brand name, your band name, um, a random saying, and that's what we're gonna go with here. So we're gonna say time stops for no one. We're gonna select all of that and make sure that it's white for now so we can see it. And I want to adjust the baseline shift. And that's just gonna align it to our outer stroke. Sitting about there. So our original path that's holding the type is in here. And now our type, we've centered it up in this outer stroke. I'm gonna track it way out. It has to be selected to do that. I'm gonna track it way out so that it reaches the bottom and aligns with the bottom down there. And then this path, I'm just going to cut it where it aligns with our intersect here. And I'm gonna delete this. And then uh, I'll just reduce the tracking so that it's not right up against the edge that tight. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a couple little dividers just to divide the words. And I'll switch into outline mode so I can see where this path starts. And I'll create a circle white circle like that. And I'm just gonna create copies wherever there's a space. And then it should align to our middle thick black stroke. And then we're just gonna add one more word along the bottom. I will say something like relentless. And then we're gonna line it up and reduce our tracking. And I'll just reduce the scale so it sits centered underneath like that. Now all of this is looking good. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna unlock my main layer. I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna outline the type, Command Shift O. And I'm also gonna outline the strokes. So I'm gonna go object path, outline stroke. Now I can select all of the white elements. Hopefully the only white elements that you have left 
are or is the text and the divider shapes on this one black rectangle. So you could use this trick now where you pick up one and then you say select same fill color. It's gonna pick up the dots and all the words and then you can subtract it from this outer shape now that it is outlined. And now everything should be a black fill, which they are, that's good. And then you can just merge them all together using the Pathfinder and it just cleans up all of those overhanging paths. It leaves you with something nice and neat, which we can now send off to be printed. So there we go. Hopefully you found this useful and hopefully you'll be able to put it to use in your own t-shirt slash merch design in the future. Really uh, appreciate all the support guys. And if you made it to this point in the video, it will be awesome if you give it a thumbs up, if you drop a comment down below and uh, subscribe to the channel to see what else I have in store. So we'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Have a good one.